Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to tell the story of Vince Staples. Vince was born in Compton and spent some of his early years of his life there. Vince was the youngest of five siblings, having an older brother and three older sisters. Vince's early years in Compton, he would experience a lot. His family was affiliated with the Crips and his dad was a full-fledged member, fully active in the streets. Vince would grow up seeing a lot of violence and abuse in his home from his mom and dad having fist fights to police being called and taking his dad to jail over the altercations. One of the interviews that your dad was was in a gang. Everybody do that. It ain't like, it ain't nothing specific. That's just what it is. That's what everybody was doing at that time. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what my parents was into. And they was like, it was different back then. No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't like it is now. Now it's more, you know, like you get to pick and years or whatnot. Like it's not really Oh, my daddy this, my daddy that. It's just that's them as traits of your parents that you see in other people. That's just what was in my house. What do you think was like the craziest experience that you remember kind of growing up in that type of environment? And I didn't really see much. And my daddy and my mama fucking each other up. <laughs> that was it. They was they they used to fight, fight too. Like like my mama, my mama not no little lady. Like my mama tall and all that. So. I remember one Christmas, my daddy did some crazy. He was off something, and he threw the Christmas tree, and then my sister boy ring came, and they was fighting, and it was just wild. The police came, my sister snitched on my small, my, 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 my youngest big sister, like seven, she called the police, the police come, my daddy, my, my daddy sock a cop, like. So, so your mom would actually beat up on your dad sometimes? They would be fighting, fighting, like, it wasn't no, like, Tina Turner. That's how it is in that environment. Like, my mom ain't no punk, my daddy ain't no punk. They're going to be arguing back back and forth, back and forth, and then that's just what it is. Vince's dad's lifestyle would land him in prison most of Vince's life, so he wouldn't have a great relationship with his dad when not growing up with him. And wanting to escape the things going on in Compton with the high crime rates and several gangs in the area, Vince's mom would decide to move the family to the north side of Long Beach for a better life. But what Vince's mom didn't know was that North Long Beach still had a lot of crime, and a lot of gangs still making a presence, just like many other high-profile areas in L.A. County. Vince would grow up playing sports and even played in Snoop Dogg's Long Beach Youth Football League. Tell me about uh, playing in the Snoop Youth Football League for the Compton Vikings. Oh, that was bad. That shit saved our motherfucking life. Orange County Junior All-American Football League was trash, bruh. That team taught us how to grow up. Wayson, it was really trying to teach us structure yeah. and how to behave and get right. And yeah. But living in Long Beach as a kid, it would influence Vince in negative ways. It was game making in his community, and by his middle school years, he wanted to be a part of the streets. Vince would join his neighborhood local gang, being the Naughty Nasty Crips, also known as the Two Ends. Many rappers claim this set, like Joey Fats, OT Genesis, and also the famous Hood Hopper, YB in the Mirror, known for turning GD to Crip. How did That's you what I'm GD saying. Like, I'm trying to get an answer out of bro, him. Like, let us know the mirror. Hey, look, bro. How you, hey, how you went from GD to Crip, bro? All right, I'm going to let you talk. How you went from GD to Crip? How I went from GD to Crip? It happened. <laughs> Vince path to the streets would be dangerous. He would start selling drugs, doing robberies, and ditching school, doing everything to land him in jail, or even worse, death. So to prevent any of this from happening, Vince's mom would decide to send him to Atlanta with his big sister for a better life and opportunity. He had friends dying and going to jail, so she felt this was the best thing for him. Especially with close friends of Vince's like Jabari dying. Jabari was a 15 year old boy who Vince grew up with. He would be shot and killed in 2008. Vince himself has stated that he had so much anger built up that he only joined the game because he wanted to kill people. After six months in Atlanta, Vince would come back to Long Beach. While being in Long Beach, he still didn't get his life together. He was getting kicked out of several schools and still game banging hard. Vince would pick up rapping when he met two dudes named DeJohn and Chuck. DeJohn took Vince to LA where he met the Odd Future Collective members, Mike G and Earl Sweatshirt. Although he didn't intend to become a rapper and had no interest in it, while being around them, he would start picking rapping up around the age of 17. Vince made several guest appearances on several Odd Future songs, most notably from Earl Sweatshirt's March 2010 mixtape called Earl. Vince released his official debut mixtape called Shine Cold Chain Volume 1 on December 30th, 2011. And in October 2012, he released a collab tape with his homie Michael. It was produced entirely by Michael. In 2012, Earl Sweatshirt returned from tour and introduced Vince to rapper Mac Miller. 
in June of 2013, Mac Under the Alias, Larry Fisherman, and Vince released a mixtape called Stolen Youth. Following Stolen Youth's release, Vince toured as a supporting act on Mac Miller's Space Migration Tour. After making three appearances on Earl Sweatshirt's debut album, Doors, this gave Vince the buzz he needed, and he would eventually sign with Def Jam Records. On March 13th, 2014, Vince released his fourth mixtape called Shine Cold Chain Volume 2. After going on tour with Schoolboy Q, Vince released the EP Hell Can Wait on October 7th, 2014. 2015 will be a big year for Vince. He will get a sponsorship with Sprite. He will also appear in the movie Dope alongside other rappers like ASAP Rocky. He will also start to show his fans his comedic personality, which many people will grow to love him for. In June of 2015, Vince was named as one of the 10 rappers of the Double XL's 2015 freshman class and was featured on the cover alongside fellow up and coming rappers like K Camp, Shy Glizzy, and Fetty Wap. In that same month of June, he would drop the album Summertime 06, which received positive reviews. August 25th, 2016, Vince released his second EP, the seven track EP, Pre Madonna, which was accompanied by a short film. On February 3rd, 2017, Vince released Back Back, the first single from his next studio album. A remix of the song was later featured in a trailer for Marvel Studios' film, Black Panther. In 2017, Vince would drop the album, Big Fish Theory, and go on two tours. Vince will also be doing things in his community. In North Long Beach, he would donate money to programs and provide new equipment for kids. In 2018, Vince would drop the album, FM. Vince also had voice roles on the anime series and also the show American Dad, along with going on two tours with Childish Gambino and Tyler the Creator. By 2018, Vince would decide to part ways with Def Jam. In 2019, Vince would land the role of an anime series called Laser Wolf, where he would act in a role of Laser Wolf for two seasons. By 2021, Vince would jump back into music and drop the self-titled album, Vince Staples. But even with his music career, it seemed like he never took rap serious and never tried hard, and more people started to know him for his personality more than his music. Vince would drop his last album in 2022 with Ramona Park Broke My Heart, which got high praise and was released on Motown Records. Vince would go on to act in shows like Insecure, Abbott Elementary, and movies like White Man Can't Jump. Of recently, Vince has been developing his own show with Netflix. He has also been on several podcasts like Back on Fig and the Joe Budden podcast, and of recently has collabed with other rappers like Earl Sweatshirt. Vince's career has been successful in many different avenues, from music and acting, and he could have been bigger than what he is, but he is a person who never been fully interested in fame and rather do his own thing at his own time. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.